Elder. This ent looking, vine shooting, root spawning, stomper, and father of the forest can be pretty easy to fight if you take advantage of the surroundings at his altar. When we left off in our last video, you beat Ekthir, and he dropped a hard antler, which progressed you further and allowed you to craft your first pickaxe. The pickaxe is used to mine copper and tin, so you can combine them into bronze and be able to craft more powerful items, such as this axe I'm using right now, which is a bronze axe. It'll also allow you to cut down some of those hard-ass trees that you couldn't cut down before, the birch and the oak. They drop fine wood and allow you to craft that fine wood bow. When you reach the black forest, and when you've gathered at least two to three stacks of copper and two to three stacks of tin, set them aside in a chest and head out on a certling core hunt. These items are used to build a smelter and a kiln. And this is how you're going to turn that copper and tin ore into copper and tin ingots. When you finish tackling the delve and you found about 10 certling cores, head back to your base where you store the copper and tin and build yourself a kiln and a smelter. For a charcoal kiln and a smelter, you're going to need 20 stone and 5 certling cores. So 10 combined. Both of these structures have to be placed on either terrain or stone flooring. In order to fill up your charcoal kiln, you're going to need at least 25 fine wood, regular wood, or core wood. Either one of these woods will work. When you're placing a smelter, however, make sure you're careful of the angled chute. The angled chute is where the ingots are going to come out, and the left side of the smelter has an entry hole for 10 ore, and the right side of the smelter has an entry hole for 20 coal. After you fill both of these, plan for approximately two pieces or coal to smelt one piece of ore. The smelter will burn one coal in approximately 15 seconds and produce a piece of ore approximately every 31 seconds. This of course is sped up by sleeping, so either do it at night or go on some resource gathering expeditions and return to find the ore on the ground. So now that you've smelted some copper, you can take six copper ingots, four stone, four coal, and ten wood near the workbench and build yourself a forge. The forge will be used to combine tin and copper ingots into bronze ingots. When you're out mining, make sure that you get enough tin. Uh, yeah, make sure. With that dramatic pause, you're going to need to know why. For every one tin, you need two copper to craft one bronze ingot. You can stack these ingots to 30. So once you've crafted some of that bronze, you're going to pick it up and a whole bunch of new recipes will be unlocked. So explore them to find out your favorite weapon or piece of armor. I recommend crafting the bronze armor at a later date and just be fun with it and go and hunt some trolls and get some troll hide and build yourself some troll armor. Why do I say this, you might ask? Well, I recommend farming trolls because, well, they're fun and their armor doesn't give you a decrease in speed. Level 1 bronze armor will give you an armor rating of 8 per piece and with the leggings, tunic, and the helmet equipped, you'll have a combined armor rating of 24. With the troll armor at level 2, you'll have the same armor level, but you'll have no negative effects at your, to your speed. The other cool thing about troll armor is when you have 4 pieces of troll armor equipped, including the cape, you get a sneak bonus. And the sneak bonus helps you when you're fighting en enemies or you're sneaking up on a little troll like this and you actually get some extra bonus damage. It comes in handy, believe me. Once you have all, all the pieces leveled to level two, you're gonna have an armor rating of 26 and that's just fine to fight the Elder. When you've built all these useful structures and construction items that you can at this point, you're ready to take on the Elder. If you've not found the altar where the Elder is summoned yet, try to explore more delves. This will be the easy way to find the rune that tells you where the Elder is on the map. It will also give you a chance to collect some more Certling cores so that you can build your first portal. Who knows, you might need it for the Elder fight like I did because he was so far away from my base. If your Elder appears within walking distance of your base, that's cool. Because mine wasn't and I had to take a boat, make a boat, sail across the ocean to his summoning altar. 
So I needed to have a portal at my base and near the Elder's Altar. So I'm not having to swim across the ocean if I decide that I'm going to die. But I decided not to die. When you find the Elder's Altar, head over to him and make sure you bring three Agent Seeds with you. Why? Because that's what you need to summon this big bad boy. So let's make sure you're ready to fight the Elder. First, make sure you've upgraded your armor that you were probably using was leather armor to either bronze or troll. Remember, I told you troll. Troll's going to be the best. Well, for now. And when you have your armor made, make sure that you make a fine wood bow. If you're not sure how to make a fine wood bow, I have a previous video that shows how to make bows. Make sure you craft about 200 fire arrows just to be safe. Um... I used probably about 80 fire arrows out of that whole thing. If you're playing the game on solo, it's probably going to be a little bit easier. If you're playing it with a group, you probably will go through 200 arrows, just so you know. Oh wait, I forgot about food. We're going to need some food when we go fight this guy. What I did was I actually stumbled upon a Draugr village. A Draugr is an enemy that you're going to be fighting in the swamp. This happened to be just in the meadows on the way to the black forest where the elder was i killed everybody in that whole village and when they drop when they die they drop these things called entrails and with all the thistle that you'll be picking up in the black forest the entrails mixed with raw meat will give you sausages in order to make these sausages you're going to need a cauldron the cauldron is crafted from your crafting menu and it takes 10 tin. When you craft a cauldron, it can be placed over a fire pit and you will now have more recipes at your disposal for food. For this fight, I recommend some cooked meat, some sausages, and the queen's jam. To craft the cooked meat, you already know how to do that. To craft sausages, we're gonna need two entrails, one raw meat, and four thistle. This will give you a stack of four. To craft the queen's jam, you're going to need eight raspberries and eight blueberries. And this will give you also a stack of four. When you have your food made, head over to the altar and read the rune stone nearby, which will give you a clue as to what you need to summon him. And since I already told you, go ahead and place those ancient seeds in your hot bar. And when you're ready to sacrifice them, place them in the flaming metal bowl in the center of the four pillars. Again, this boss fight is pretty easy and you're gonna see me fight him as per the usual in the videos. I'm gonna use my fine wood bow and fire arrows. I use the pillars to block his vine shots because you don't wanna get hit by those. You're not gonna be able to take very many of them. He also summons roots. They usually surround the area that you're standing in. So you use the stone pillars as I do and when the roots have spawned, move to another pillar and keep firing them fire arrows. I'll let you watch my fight and I'll be back when you beat him.
Now that wasn't so hard, now was it? You will see after the Elder falls, he goes poof. You're left with a trophy head. Of the Elder, of course. There it is right there. Yep. And a skeleton key. The skeleton key is used for the crypts in the swamp. So now you want to take yourself over to the original spawn point and place the Elder's head on the trophy rack and claim his power. Now that we're at the spawn point, the Elder's power gives you faster wood chopping. This comes in handy for the next phase in Valheim as you'll be building up your base defenses and heading to the swamp to collect iron. We will see you in the next video, my friends, when we talk about the gear to defeat Bone Mass, Valheim's third boss, and is he ever a doozy. But until then, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and most importantly, please be kind and rewind. Thank you.